Last season with our Oldham side, we managed to finish second place in League 2, securing ourselves back-to-back -back promotions, and now we find ourselves in League 1, where, on the 1st of July, we are predicted to finish bottom of the table. We have, however, done some transfer business already to hopefully mean that we don't finish on the bottom. I'd love to get a third promotion. I don't think it's going to happen. First up, very quickly, a whole bunch of players have left the club on free transfers. The big name there being Alex Reed, 29 years of age, played basically every game of football for us the last couple of years, scoring loads and loads of goals. And yeah, he just did not want to sign a new contract, so he's gone. And I'm kind of okay with it, because it means we can reinvest his money and buy someone better. And so far, with the transfer window just being open and the contracts expiring and things like that, we've brought in four players. Brendan Galloway is first up, 29-year-old Zimbabwean international, formerly of Everton. That's where I remember him from, but he's actually played for Luton and Plymouth as well between his time in Everton, which he actually never really played. I mean, he played 15 times back then and then just never played ever again for them. Fair enough. And then, yeah, we brought him in on a free transfer. Yes, he's technically a left-back and we don't play them, but he's good enough to play as a centre-back. Probably not good enough for this league, but... I think season three is a season of building because the two promotions that we had probably might have kind of caused some problems because we're not good enough for this league right now. Also joining the club is Alex Hunt on a free transfer, formerly of Grimsby and actually formerly of Oldham. Was that a loan deal? It was a loan deal in 21-22. We have brought him in on a free transfer. I think this is a good player. He's going to be deployed predominantly as that Segundo Volante there. But if we need him, we might kind of retrain him to be that attacking midfield role. Also signing on a free transfer is Johnny Smith, a 27-year-old winger from Wigan, Burton, Swindon, Bristol City and Oldham. I've not done this intentionally, by the way. I've not just gone and loaned and signed former Oldham players. Didn't even realise he used to play for Oldham. But yeah, he's coming on a free transfer. He can play on both flanks, which is very helpful for us. And finally, Will Armitage has made his loan deal permanent for too much money. £200,000, which is what uh, Southampton played Cheltenham in 21-22 for him. But Armitage, I think he's a good player. He's still young, only 20. He's got some potential behind him. So I'm hoping that money isn't wasted and either he climbs up the leagues with us or we end up selling him for maybe half a million or maybe even a million in the future. And that's fine as well. Also, this man's gone on loan. But that is the transfer business so far. Obviously, being in the Football League, we do have a transfer window and we've got just under 500000 to spend, but a fairly hefty wage budget. And I think we are going to need to try and use some of that wage budget because I don't think our squad's good enough right now. On the 1st of September, then, the window has closed and a bit of business, a bit more business, mainly joining the club. Only one player leaving. Benny Cuoto has signed for Lusitania La Rosa in Portugal. Is he from Portugal? He was born in Portugal, but he's also part English. OK, fair enough. Uh, yeah, he's left for, I should know, this £74,000. Joining the club then, the first of five players is James Hilson, 24-year-old goalkeeper signed on a free transfer. He's played eight times for Reading in his entire career, and now he's played five times for us and conceded nine. Nathan Young Coombs is next up, a free transfer formerly of Stoke and Brentford and AFC Wimbledon, and Rangers and Chelsea apparently joining on a free, like I mentioned. He's going to come in, probably get a lot of game time, I think, as a striker, but right now, currently injured. Another striker to join is Kelvin, and we're not going to try and pronounce his last name because I can't do it. Signed from Reading on a free transfer. He's good. I had him in my Reading save at the start of FM24, and he was a very good player for us. So Kelvin has come to us. I'm not convinced he's going to get a lot of football, but he's going to hopefully get some game time. 24-year-old Swedish winger and striker Julian Larsson has joined from Nottingham Forest on a free transfer, and I'm going to retrain him to be a left midfielder. That is right. We brought him in intentionally to retrain him. He's already kind of started training there, you can see at the moment. So hopefully he can kind of get good enough to play that role. I'm going to have to force play Julian because otherwise he's not going to play at all for us because I don't think he's good enough to be a striker. And finally, Jimmy Turaninen has joined, formerly of Chelsea. He's a good signing. I think Jimmy's a very good signing for us. The worry with Jimmy is I think he's too good for us and he's probably not going to stick around for too long and somebody might end up kind of nicking him, coming in from... He's got a three-year deal, so if we do sell him for maybe like 700000 which is his top-end budget at the moment... I guess we kind of have to accept it. And that is it. There's been a whole bunch of loan deals going on, but most of these are actually youth players who kind of need to get a bit of game time. The only one, arguably, who isn't is Billy Vigger, who we brought in from, uh, I want to say, Arsenal, or maybe even Derby, or East Bourneborough. Not quite sure, but yeah, he's come in and gone out on loan to Accrington, went to Scunthorpe last year. He's getting better, but probably not quick enough. In the league, however, we are currently top of the table. Four wins, one draw. We have beaten Notts County, Preston, Plymouth and Reading. We have drawn with Colchester, 13 points, two points clear of second place. Shrewsbury, could the triple promotion be on the cards? Or has that just kind of been a little bit lucky at the start of the season? Some players to draw your eyes to. Willie Kambwala. 
Yes, he's got a work permit. He spent last season out on loan at Ponferrada, and now he has returned with a work permit, so he's able to play for us. He's got three years on his contract, so hopefully we can keep him for a couple of years, then sell him on, or maybe in a couple of years' time. We're in the Premier League, but I doubt it. Maybe we are, but yeah, Willie is here and he's able to play. Andrew Dallas as well, I think is going to be a key player for us this season. He's already scored eight goals in seven starts in all competitions. 26 years of age now, he is, I'm saying he's getting on, he's not getting on at all, but I'm starting to think this is as good as he's going to get, so we might need to consider maybe bringing somebody new in in the future. But right now, he should be able to do a job for us for at least one more year. And finally, I want to take a look at Ted Bishop. Obviously, we brought him in last season to play on that right-hand side. I'm thinking he's going to get another year playing there, although he can kind of play in that deeper role in midfield. He can play on the right-hand side. So hopefully, I'm expecting some good things from Teddy Bishop this year. He's already got goals so far in the Carabao Cup. Not doing so hot at the moment in the league. Probably want to have a look, maybe see what we can do about that. I have no idea what we can do about that, but there we are. When it comes to formation, then we're sticking with the Iron Man formation and we are locking in three players. We are sticking Will Armitage as that central defender in the middle at the back because that is his most natural role. Can't really play as a ball player, although technically he's three-star in both, but I want him in the middle. Larson on the left-hand side, as we know, and Turaninen as that attacking midfielder. Everyone else, like we always say, can just basically be picked by the assistant manager. And hopefully, how we've kicked off this season is how we continue this season. We have been knocked out of the Carabao Cup, by the way. Um, Bristol Street Motors Trophy, FA Cup. Yep, yeah, sure. Third round will be nice. And uh, Bristol Street Motors Trophy. Uh, does anyone care about it? Well, on the 1st of January, then, we have dropped all the way down to ninth place in the table. We have had a little bit of a roller coaster. When you look at our positions, we dropped all the way down to 19th place. And we've started to claw our way back up. And now we've just kind of sat in the middle of the table in ninth place, which arguably... Right now, I think I'd probably take. If we finish ninth place in the table, that's probably okay. And at what is essentially the halfway point in the season, Andrew Dallas has 19 goals in all competitions. He's doing all right. He's still doing well for us this season. Maybe we can squeeze another year out of him. Someone else who's doing very good is Nathan Young-Coombs. Obviously, the new signing over the summer has got 15 in all competitions. Also, five assists to his name. And Ted Bishop on the right-hand side. Yes, he's not really banging in the goals, only two of them, but 10 assists is very, very good. So as it is January, obviously the window is open. We've got half a million in the bank to spend. We've got about £2,000 a week of wages that we could also use. Not quite sure what we're going to do because I don't really think we need to do a huge amount of work here. Nick Zanev is our number one goalkeeper, which arguably maybe we need a new goalkeeper but everyone else I'm kind of okay with Quambala, Armitage, Galloway in defence is good Forson and Hunter midfield Larson, Bishop, Turanine and Dallas and Young Coombs up front that's a good starting 11 for me we might just kind of go for a bit of depth so on the 2nd of February we have sold just one player and brought in just one player Eriko Souza is the man to leave the club signing for Angolan side Interclub for about £19,000 so he's gone over there he wasn't really getting too much game time coming off the bench I think basically Ted Bishop kind of kicked him out of his starting 11 position so Souza he's on his way and coming in is a goalkeeper Andrew Fisher I'm not sure he's good enough to be our number one but Apparently, he's the number one goalkeeper. He is as good as our number one. In fact, he's better than Nick Zanev, much better than James Hilson. So, Fisher has come in formally of Swansea. He has cost a bit of money, £61,000. But I'm hoping we've got ourselves a decent goalkeeper now that we can actually maybe try and keep some clean sheets. Because we're still ninth place in the table. We are just off of the playoffs. But the problem we have is if we actually show you this and we can see ninth place, we have conceded 67 goals. We leak goals. We are, in fact, the worst team when it comes to conceding goals. But we are also the second best team for scoring goals. So we let in a lot, but we score a lot as well. What I'm trying to say is if we can stop conceding goals, we'll be flying up this league table and we'll actually probably be crowned champions come mid-March. Speaking of being crowned champions, um, yeah, we're not champions of the FA Cup, Carabao Cup or the Bristol Street Motors Trophy because we've been knocked out in every single one of them. Fleetwood Town, Barnsley... And then just in the group stages, I assume, we had Lincoln, Man United under-21s, and Blackburn. I'd like to point out, I don't think I kind of mentioned this, but in League One, there are some ridiculously good sides. Watford are in League One, Reading are in League One, which we know are in League One anyway. Blackburn are in League One. This is a very tough group, a very tough group of teams right now. And the fact that we're kind of up there in the right end of the table, I'm okay with. Sheffield Wednesday also are a good side. Wigan, I'd say, are probably a good side as well. Wrexham, I imagine, are a good team. This is not an easy league. Right, let's jump forward then to the end of the season and see where we finish. If we can finish in the playoffs, that will be excellent. I imagine, though, we're probably going to finish about mid-table. Yep, we finished ninth. Uh, we conceded 100 goals. 
We scored 106, but we conceded 100 goals. And we, we literally, we, but we didn't move. We dropped down to 10th a couple of times, but we stayed in 9th place, which I'm fine with. Staying in the league is kind of the objective, I think, for this season. Blackburn, Lincoln and Charlton are the three teams to get promoted. Who is joining us, though, from the championship? Do we even know? We do know. It is QPR, Blackpool and Millwall. Arguably, that's okay. We haven't got any massive teams there. QPR, I imagine, will be pretty tough. But Blackpool, Millwall... I mean, Millwall, probably pretty tough as well. Sorting the squad by goals, and we've got a lot of goal scorers, which makes sense. We scored 106 in the league. So we've got Forson scored 10 and 11 assists from central midfield, playing as a Segundo Valante is what his role would have been. That's actually very good. Aidan Barlow would have been the backup attacking midfielder. Yep, come off the bench 26 times, scoring 7 in the league, 11 in all competitions. Jimmy, the starting attacking midfielder, with 12 goals and 15 assists. That's a lot of assists for Jimmy. Kelvin getting a lot of goals as well. A lot more than I arguably think, think he should have got. 18 goals, 10 assists in all competitions. Young Coombs getting 20 goals and 7 assists in all competitions. And then Andrew Dallas getting 21 and 8 in all competitions. So we're scoring goals. We're scoring goals. If we scroll over and see my gigantic average rating kind of tab here, sort by average rating and we'll just see the worst performers. It's a goalkeeper. Anyone else play a lot of games? Uh, a centre-back, a centre-back. A goalkeeper, um, attacking midfielder. So our worst performers is our goalkeeper and, and Will Armitage. Maybe Will Armitage probably shouldn't have been playing. Maybe shouldn't have locked him in. But there we are. So we finish the season then in ninth place in the table. Next year we go again in League One. We need to try and move ourselves up towards the playoffs. I think that needs to be our objective. We've got no money. We've got no money. That could be a problem. 